My goodness, the K1 faced a rocky, rocky start. But Creality has been working to rectify all of the initial issues and it is time to take a look at the new K1. So in this video, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into this printer after Creality's response to the initial reviews. Before we talk about the obvious hardware and clipper integration failure, I want to briefly touch on the one singular issue that I have with this printer that wasn't widely talked about. And that is going to be the inadequacy of the part cooling fan when you're printing at high speeds. If you print at these high speeds and you do not enable the auxiliary fan on the side, the layers are just simply not going to cool properly. And this observation isn't even limited to steep overhangs because I noticed this problem on large flat surfaces as well. And of course, poor cooling is going to lead to poor print quality. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I tried to initially use Cura with the K1 and it failed miserably because I didn't enable the side cooling fan with Cura. You can only enable that side cooling fan within the Creality print slicer. With some post-processing scripts, I'm sure you can enable this fan in Cura as well, but it is not straightforward and is not something that the layman could do easily. So there is actually one really nifty feature with Creality Slicer, and that is that it will integrate the clipper interface directly within the slicer itself. When you look at Bamboo Studio, Orca Slicer, or even Quiddy Slicer, this feature seems to be common, but this is still a very new feature among slicers, so it is good to see that it is installed in Creality Print already. And the biggest reason why I like this direct integration is because after you slice a file, you can immediately send it directly to one or even an unlimited number of Creality printers that you own that are running Clipper. Now, while we're talking about Clipper, let's get into the biggest news of this video. As of the timing of filming this video, merely 12 hours ago, Creality finally released a fully unlocked version of Clipper that you can install on your K1 series printers. So the link to the required GitHub repo can be found in my description and on that repo there is a fairly simple 8 step guide to installing a fully fledged fluid or mainsail installation of Clipper on your K1. Now I'm not exactly sure what version of Clipper this is, but be aware this is likely going to be a situation very similar to the Sonic Pad in that Creality is going to have to take the newest versions of Clipper and port them over to the K1 before you can actually install them. So because of this situation, if Creality does go bottom up, which most likely they won't, that Clipper updates for the K1 are going to completely halt until a third party service or individual comes around and continues to update Clipper on the K1 series machines. Now all of this is important to mention because as you probably heard, the original factory installation of Clipper on the K1 is absolutely horrific. With the original K1 Clipper, the only thing that you could do was operate the auxiliary fan or the LED, operate the kinematic system, and start and stop a print. Nothing else. So if you have purchased or you plan to purchase any K1 series product, in my opinion, it is an absolute must to go through that eight step process to install a fully unlocked version of Clipper on your device. So one of the greatest things about the K1 is that it is a fully enclosed machine and that opens the door for a lot of 3D printing advances. But what if you already own a 3D printer and it is not fully enclosed? That is where the sponsor of today's video comes into play. Fanatter designs and manufactures high quality hard shell enclosures for the printers that you already own. When you print in an enclosed chamber, that's going to allow the environment to be more stable. That means no more fans overcooling and warping parts, no more cool ambient air reducing overall print quality, and enclosure is going to bring your old dusty Ender 3 into the modern era. And 3D printing with a Fanatter enclosure is like driving a Rolls Royce, it just feels premium. If you're printing in an open air environment, I highly recommend you check out one of these enclosures. And once again, thank you to Fanatta for sponsoring today's video, and if you do want to check these out, 
there will be a link in the description below. So while the K1 should have been delivered with this Clipper version from Factory, it is clear that Creality is working to make amends with the community and resolve all these issues. So with that out of the way, the K1 is a serious turnkey printer. And in my PLA printing experience, this machine is fast. It is very, very fast. It is a clear competitor in both speed and print quality to the Bamboo lineup. And this machine comes in at nearly $100 cheaper than the cheapest Bamboo printer. So with that in mind, this definitely is a steal of a deal, especially seeing as with this K1, you get a fully enclosed machine which on the cheapest bamboo printer is a $150 upgrade. That also doesn't even take into consideration that the Creality lineup of printers very regularly go on sale or have coupon codes that you can apply to your order. So being a fully enclosed machine, there are some caveats I want to mention. And technically, if you want to print PLA, you should do so with the lid off and the door open. And with the design of those components, they're either impossible or very difficult to manage. That being said, I actually haven't had any issues printing PLA in the fully enclosed environment when my auxiliary fan is enabled. Additionally, one thing I am extremely excited to report on is this machine's ability to print PETG at quality, especially at the high speeds that it operates. So I printed these parts in PETG on the K1 in only 75% of the time that I used to print these on other machines. And the biggest, most important thing about that is the quality on these components is absolutely stunning and beautiful. Now, unfortunately, there is one issue that I didn't notice until I had already printed 15 of these items, and that is upon removal of the part, I had actually damaged almost every single one of them. Unfortunately, the PETG adheres to the smooth PEI plate way better than it ever should, and the interface layer that I was applying was not thick enough. Due to the thin nature of these parts, as I was peeling them off of the PEI plate, a lot of them were being cracked and damaged ever so slightly to the point that I didn't notice until one of them was completely and entirely cracked. At that point, I went ahead and checked all of the other ones I printed and sure enough, there were small micro cracks in all of the components as well. My point here is if you intend to print PETG on the K1, please make sure you use a very thick interface layer, likely glue stick, which is a lot thicker than the hairspray I was using, and you probably won't have any issues whatsoever. So another thing that I want to mention about the initial launch of the K1 is going to be Creality's response to the faulty hardware. Many users were experiencing poor extrusion due to loose extruder gears. Many users were also experiencing hot end heating issues that would ultimately result in a clippy error and crash clipper. So the good news here is that both of those problems were resolved. However, if you do plan to purchase a K1 from a third party supplier, be aware that you definitely need to contact them and tell them to send you the brand new hardware because you will likely have the poorly designed components pre-installed. So my K1 is actually an original manufactured unit and I did personally experience that poor extrusion quality. I however haven't yet experienced the heating issues related to the hot end. I was shipped the newly designed extruder and after about 15 minutes of installation, all of my issues completely and entirely disappeared. Like the clipper issue where they launched the product with it locked down, I would have obviously preferred Creality to recognize these hardware flaws prior to the launch and, well, fix them prior to the launch. However, I am quite pleased at the prompt response from Creality as well as their resolution. So how about interfacing to the K1 through the Clipper interface? I did notice this to be quite glitchy where at multiple times I would send a file from the printer to the K1 and they completely seemed to disappear into the void. Likewise, multiple times I also tried to cancel a print job which also seemed to pull a Houdini. So these issues were quite frustrating and multiple times I just went back to the bulletproof method of using a USB 
sticking it into the front of the machine and using the screen. But it is important to note that all of my testing was done with the lockdown version of Clipper and I do suspect that this issue will be cleaned up after you install the fully unlocked version of Clipper. So as it stands, the K1 has come a very long way since its initial release thanks to the efforts that Crowley's put in at fixing their shortcomings. I have been exceptionally happy with my print results, and if you're interested in a fully turnkey printer with the opportunity for some slight modifications and customization, then I do believe that the K1 would be a great option. Despite the shortcomings that I tested this machine with, I have been very happy with my K1 so far, and now that we have the fully unlocked version of Clipper and I can fully customize my printer config files, I believe my experience is only going to get better. And well, the video's over, but I'm going to leave a little bit of time right here for you to click the like button if you so choose to. Thank you. Also subscribe. Bye.